Welcome back to The Compressor Guru. Thanks for joining us. This is going to be a little different episode today. We're going to talk about, we're going to straighten out a common misconception about uh, uh, air compressors and we're going to talk in some generalities today, but the misconception is real. Now, misconception isn't all uh, an accidental unwanted uh, child. No, that's that's another kind of misconception. Uh, this misconception, uh, I got a call from a, a gentleman the other day from Hollywood, South Carolina. Thanks for calling. And uh, he was looking for parts for a uh, Develvus uh, 432 compressor. And these were a great compressor. Unfortunately, with the exception of a couple little filters and a few minor parts, I have nothing for them there is very little out there anywhere for these pumps. They've been discontinued for 30 or more years and the parts supply for them is gone. That being said, the uh, 432 is a V4 two-stage five-horse compressor. Now, when you look at it, it physically is a larger pump but that only runs at maybe 600 RPM, and it's making 17 and a half CFM at 175. It is a good pump. They last forever. Uh, unfortunately, now when they wear out, you're not getting parts. So the misconception this gentleman had was that because it's a big pump, it'll make more air than other five horsepower pumps. No, five, a five horsepower pump, and when I, we're gonna get in the weeds here. Uh, a five horsepower electric industrial motor makes 1700 RPM, and it's a 220 single phase or three phase motor, that doesn't matter. But you are at, in single phase, you're at about 22 to 24 amps. When you have that motor and you put it and you run maximum speed on an air compressor, you are actually transferring electric energy through a motor into compressed energy in the form of compressed air. Electrical energy can only be stored in a battery, and AC energy can't be stored in a battery. DC energy can. But you're taking energy from electric and turning it into stored energy in the form of compressed air. So with the... With a compressor, you're driving it with a, this same five-horse motor whether you're running a 432 Develvus or you're running a 242 Ingersoll or you're running a 253 Ingersoll or you're running a 325 Quincy or you're running a QT5 Quincy or uh, if it's a five horsepower pump, they may be all different sizes, all different weights. The, when I was doing research for this video, the lightest five horsepower pump I found was about 135 pounds. I think the heaviest one is probably a Quincy, a 325 Quincy, which is probably 250 pounds. Uh, the Quincy is a big pump. There's a lot of wasted space in the Quincy because they are so overbuilt. The QT series, uh, they're a very good pump also. And the QT series is what Atlas Copco is using on their uh, better small recip machines now. That's what we've been selling a lot of lately. That all being said, the five horsepower, you out of your normal industrial five horse uh, compressor two stage, you will be getting somewhere between 15 and 17 CFM at 175. That Develvus uh, 432 was probably making 17 CFM. It was probably running 600 RPM. Now you say, wait a minute, it's a bigger compressor. Why doesn't it make more air? Well, the TS5, uh, which is Ingersoll's really cheap five-horse two-stage compressor 
uh, actually is maximum RPM on that pump is 1,575 RPMs. And at that, it's going to make about 15 or 16 CFM at 175. If you're going down the road and you are in a car and you are running in top gear and you're running 2,000 RPMs and you're going 55 mile an hour. That motor at 2,000 RPMs isn't using a lot of fuel and it isn't uh, running hot or uh, screaming. That same car, if you put a little tiny engine in it, to go 55, you might have, you might not be able to get it into top gear. You might be in second or third gear, and you got it at the floor. And instead of running 2,000 or 2,500 RPM, it's running 6,000 RPM. All you old wrenches know that the more RPMs you run through something, the shorter it's going to last. Your better Ingersolls, your better Quincy's. Your top RPM range is about 900 RPM. When you get these really cheap little pumps and you're up to 1500 RPM, yes, you are getting the air out of them, the same amount of air that you're going to get out of that old Develbus that weighs 250 pounds. It's, you know, physically three times the size of the uh, Ingersoll, but it all makes the same air your horsepower rating on your industrial electric motor is what really makes the difference. The uh, other misconception about the size of compressors is your air tanks. Your air tanks, I, I get calls like, I, I hear this every week, if not every day. I get a call, hey bud, I got a big air compressor. It's got an 80 gallon tank on it. Okay. What size is the motor? I don't know, but it's a big air compressor. No, you have a you have an 80 gallon tank, and that's not even a big tank. You can have a one horsepower compress motor and compressor on that uh, tank, and to pump it up from zero to 175, it's going to take about 40 minutes with that one horsepower electric motor. If you put a five horsepower and a five horsepower pump on that same tank, it's going to take you eight minutes to go from zero to 175. If you put a 10 on it, it's going to take you four minutes. It's all relative. So I've sold 100 horsepower compressors with 500 gallon tanks. I've sold 10 horsepower compressors with a 500 gallon tank. These aren't attached tanks, these are tanks that stand alone beside a base mounted machine. But tank size doesn't mean it's compressor size. Your compressor size is actually your uh, pump in the model and your motor horsepower and here's another thing when you go to the big box store, you know how I feel about the big box stores when you go to the big box stores and they have uh, a six horsepower compressor and it's only making 12 CFM, it's not really a six horse. You basically got yourself a glorified three horsepower compressor and 99% of the time you look at the motor tag, it's 3600 RPMs. So your industrial motors are what we're talking about here. Your industrial motors all run 17, 1725, 1740, 1750 RPMs. And those are your industrial rated motors. That five horse motor in single phase is going to take 22 to 24 amps. And the size of the compressor isn't as big a factor is how big of a motor you have driving it and you're driving that compressor at maximum RPM. The I have a customer actually it was part of an episode uh, the teardown we did on the 25 horse the 5120 
uh, the customer actually bought that and it had a 40 horsepower motor on it and he thought he bought a 40 horse compressor he bought a 25 horsepower machine but whoever he bought it from had a spare 40 horsepower sitting around they mounted it they didn't turn the speed up they just put the motor on to run it at the correct speed for a 25 horsepower and the guy thought he bought a 40 horsepower he didn't and if he would have turned if he would have put a different pulley on the motor he would have spun the compressor so fast it would have burned up it wouldn't have lived anyway so we're all when we talk about this misconception that I have a big compressor I'll never get one to make that much air no it's really about your motor horsepower it's about the physical it's about the physics of an energy transfer from the electric flowing to a stored energy of compressed air I've put up a bunch of different compressors here different brands they've all been two stage five horsepower rated compressors and the bottom line on it all is they all make the same amount of air if you have a five horse industrial motor driving them so if you've got a big old compressor and you go I'm never getting one to run like that again well you may not get one that will run nice and slow and last forever like that again now your Quincy QR series will now you may never be able to get that uh, the Elvis 432 again you may never find parts for it again but you will uh, be able to find a good compressor that will last a good long time they're they still they're still making them the Atlas Copco's the Quincy's uh, I'll mention the Ingersoll they make a good machine if you're buying the good machine not, not the junk the big box stores sell there's good machines out there but don't let the size of the machine fool you into thinking you're going to get more air because of a big pump you can't make the you have limited physical abilities from that five horsepower motor to generate air out of a two-stage pump folks thank you for checking in this is the compressor guru everybody calls me bud I by the way I, it is kind of a kick when people call and say can I talk to the guru that's something I never expected when we started this so upcoming episodes we got some fun stuff coming we're going to finally get the review done on that uh, air ratchet that I gave myself for my birthday uh, we've got an Ingersoll out there that something dumb happened to not once but twice and what happened to the Ingersoll wasn't the Ingersoll's fault it was human error and it's going to be fun to do that anyway Thank you for tuning in. This is the Compressor Guru. God bless you. Have a great day. Do all those youtube -y things like my buddy Ken says. Uh, hit the like, subscribe, uh, share this with your friends. When somebody says, I got a big compressor, send them this link. Have a great day.